These are some examples of different types of sampling. So in the first case, imagine we have up here our population of all uh, individuals with a Mizzou student ID number. And we're going to collect four observations, Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. You can imagine this is your grade point average or uh, whatever measure. Uh, for most of the examples, it won't really matter specifically, although for some of them it will. So in the first case, imagine we just, for Y1, randomly pick some uh, pick one, uh, pick a Mizzou ID number from the population and record whatever outcome like GPA we're interested in. Then for our second observation, we completely ignore what happened for the first observation. We just randomly sample another ID number. Again, for the third observation, just another independent random sample from the population the fourth, same thing. So in this case, the observations are all independent in that, you know, when we sampled the fourth value, we completely ignored what happened for the first three, and they are identical in that all of them are coming from the same population. So this would be an example of IID or independent and identically distributed sampling. Now, instead, imagine we took this original population, but then we split it, and on the left we have all students classified as in state, so Missouri residents, MO, and then on the right we have everybody who's not classified officially as a Missouri resident. Now imagine we made that same division in our sample. So again, this is from a before sampling perspective. We say we are going to sample our first two observations from the Missouri residents and then we'll sample the second two observations from the non-residents. So we'll take random sample from Missouri here, random sample here, and then for Y3 and Y4, random sample, random sample. So as in the first example, we still have independent sampling if each time we're just going uh, and sampling from the population without thinking about what values we got for the other individuals, just going back to the population. But we no longer have identically distributed data. Um, again, here it does matter, at least in principle, what our actual outcome variable is. Uh, but we could imagine for most things, for whatever reason, it will be a different Y distribution for the Missouri residents and for the non-residents. So the distribution, again, from the before sampling perspective of Y1 as a random variable, that will be the same as for Y2, but those will be different than the distributions of Y3 and Y4 in general. So here we have independent but not identically distributed data, which is often abbreviated INID. Now we can imagine a variation on this. This is also an example of stratified sampling. Here we sort of have this Missouri stratum and this non-resident stratum. Uh, 
Uh, we can imagine something a little bit different, but also somewhat similar, where we don't ahead of time know there's this division into these two groups, but we think about first, instead of taking the population of individuals, instead thinking about, for example, classes at Mizzou. So we can think about, you know, there's a econometrics class, there's a philosophy of science class, um, there's, you know, a calculus class. So we could imagine first we are going to sample from these classes, so we're not yet sampling individuals. We first sample a class, and what we're going to do, again, from this before sampling perspective, is we're going to sort of make these observations in pairs where the first two observations, y1 and y2, will be students randomly picked from the same class, and then y3 and y4 will be students from a different class. Um, so y3 and y4 are in a class together, y1 and y2 are in a class together. For example, maybe we happen to randomly sample econometrics for y1 and y2, and then you know maybe you get randomly selected for observation one, and a different student ends up in observation two. And then for the uh, y3 and y4, we pick a different class, maybe it's calculus. And then within that calculus class, we pick at random a student and measure their y to get y3 and a different student to get y4. So this is an example of clustered sampling in that we have uh, these clusters, in this case they're classes, where sort of by design we have multiple individuals, multiple observations from the same cluster, but we don't know ahead of time that y1 and y2 will be from the econometrics class specifically. So y1 and y2 could have been from philosophy of science class, could have been from the calculus class, could have been from whatever other class we have in there. So in this case, if we first think about the identically distributed part, we do, in spite of how complicated it looks, we do actually have the identically distributed part. If you think about for example, y1 compared to y4, well, both y1 and y4 are equally likely to come from, for example, the econometrics class, and then within that, they're equally likely to be any student within that econometrics class. So y1 and y4 are effectively being sampled from the same population. So y1 and y4 have the same probability of being u, for example. And same with y1 and y3, or y2 and y4, or y3 and y4. So we do have the identically distributed part. But if we think about the independence, and again here it maybe depends which y variable we're looking at, uh, but if you imagine you know, y1 and y2 are coming from the same class, if we're measuring something academic, uh, then you know, if they have the same professor this semester, that professor may have a similar effect on uh, y1 and y2, which is an effect that the professor does not have on y3 and y4, who have a different professor in a different class. Uh, or we might also imagine 
you know, if it's an economics class, maybe there's uh, certain similarities we might expect between uh, the two students from that class versus a communications class or something like that. Uh, so in this case, again, from the before sampling perspective, even though we don't know specifically which class Y1 and Y2 will be from, we do know that they're from the same class and that Y3 and Y4 are from the same class. So this can, has the potential to uh, cause some correlation between Y1 and Y2. In other words, uh, cause them to not be independent. Um, whereas we do still have independence across clusters. For example, Y1 and Y4 are independent. Y2 and Y3 are independent, and so on. So often, uh, if we have this sort of clustered sampling setup. Again, depending on the variable and what the cluster represents, uh, we might potentially suspect some correlation within each cluster. Let's remove some of these arrows now. Uh, so another example of clustering, maybe more uh, straightforward. Instead of classes, we could imagine we have uh, the same, we have students, but then we're going to measure them over time, over, say, the fall and spring semesters. Almost done here. Okay. So now we are back to these are individuals, but now we're going to group these. So Y1 will be fall, Y2 is spring, Y3 is fall for a different student, Y4 is spring for a different student. So we have you know, student one, student two, I don't know what letter that was supposed to be, student three. So as in the last example, the first step is we randomly select the student for the first two observations, and then whichever student that is, we fill in their fall and spring, and then similarly we randomly select a different student for Y3 and Y4 and fill in their fall and spring. So as before, we have identical sampling because each, um, well, sorry. In this case, there might be differences between fall and spring because uh, maybe certain classes like this one are usually offered in spring but not fall. Uh, so we might imagine even that would fail. Uh, but certainly the independence for most Y variables we would think of uh, would fail. For example, if you imagine the semester GPA, you know, if we happen, student two happens to be um, a very high GPA student, we would expect to see, you know, a high value in the fall and a high value in the spring. If student three happens to be a lower GPA student, we'd probably, we'd tend to expect a low value in both the fall and the spring. Um, or if there's sort of a medium GPA, we'd sort of expect medium values in the fall and the spring. So in other words, we're much more likely to see sort of high, high, or low, low, or medium, medium, than we are to see you know, high in fall and low in spring, or low in fall and high in spring. That's a lot less likely. So mathematically, what that means is we have a positive correlation between Y1 and Y2, and a positive correlation between Y3 and Y4. Again, thinking of this from the before 
sampling perspective. So we don't know which student will end up in Y1, Y2 versus Y3, Y4, but we know it's that same student in fall and spring for Y1 and Y2, and then it's the same student, Y3, Y4, fall and spring. And so that will be uh, correlated mathematically. Um, so there it's not, again, not identical because we have this clustered setup. One more final uh, related example, if I can figure out how to erase these. So you can imagine, sorry, instead of uh, two separate individuals, we just take one individual for all four observations and we just observe that same individual over four consecutive semesters. For example, semester one, semester two, semester three, semester four. Um, so the subscript on the y values is sort of like time, right? Time period one, time period two, time period three, time period four. So again, we imagine we have all our possible students up here, but this time we just pick one student and then we observe that same student over time. So in this case, again, for most Y variables we'd imagine, whether it's semester GPA or hours of sleep um, or uh, height, <laughs> or whatever it may be, um, they may be things that are changing over time, uh, but they, they tend to be more similar from the same student over time than looking across students. Uh, so again, if Y is semester GPA, you know, we're much more likely to see four relatively high values in a row than really high, really low, medium, sort of jumping around at random. Uh, so in that case, we this would be a time series, and uh, there's, again, usually not independence over time. There's some dependence, um, which has its own considerations, but time series is something we'll come back to uh, later on.